Back at it with another Build Biology. This guy's in for, I think, a third time now. If you, if you keep building cool cars, you get to keep coming back. So, BC, what's hey, up, how man? are you, sir? Good to see you. Good to see you. Like, I need an office here. It's like my second home. <laughs> yeah, it's just awesome. move in. I should, I should. Yeah. What have you brought us today? Something really special, something near and dear to my heart. This is the first Porsche I ever built in 2007. This thing is something I beat the crap on. Participate in rallies, canyon runs, I've taken it to a half mile. I've done crazy stuff with it. This is a beautiful 1975 Porsche 911. It is chock full of modern amenities. Well, let's talk about the exterior. Let's start in the front. Look at the front here. It has the look of the old school IROC Porsches. Yes, Porsche had an IROC series, International Race of Champions, and these were how all those cars looked racing at Riverside Raceway in the 70s. Powers battling each other, and they're as hard headed as any. Bad Pearson is off the track in the dirt. Allison's in the dirt. They're both off the track, but they've kept it on. This is terrific. To be able to keep a car in this is great. I had that very nice NA IROC look, but you notice the lights here. This is actually what is known as an H. R, H4 reimagined. And our friends from 911 Headlights did this. And what's really cool and what sets them apart is that they embed modern optics with a modern lens. That is a nice touch that's yeah. elegant yeah. and also embedded in engineering, which I love, which is pretty cool. To make this car as slippery as possible, I got rid of the crazy nasty flag mirrors. Yeah. And went with something with a nod to the old school air cool spiders. It's a little challenging to see out of, but it still does a job and also has a Porsche history, but still give me a nice aerodynamic advantage, which is pretty cool. As we go across the top, I see I have, um, this car originally came with a sunroof, but of course I got rid of that. We actually mm. cut from here and cut from there and put in the sunroof from a 911 really? that did not have sunroof. Morbid exterior, wheels. When you think of old Fuke wheels that Porsche had, this is a modern take on that. These are like some that Magnus Walker made extremely popular. These are outlaw wheels, courtesy of 1552. In the front, we have a beautiful 17 by nine. In the rear, we have a well-justified 17 by 11, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And wrapped around, of course, Toyo R888 rubber. This is a tail that is also reminiscent of the IROC series, but as you can see, we got a little naughty with yeah. the rear. We don't have any side skirts. It's just really clean, very IROC looking. Mm -hmm. And this is what is known as the BC Motor Electric Blue paint job, which is a nice electric blue or green. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, can you tell us what color this is? <laughs> but has a little nice purple hue to it, which is pretty cool. And that was made by our friends at uh, CA Auto Works. They did a good job in making this paint job come to life. If you look at the original IROC series, this bumper has some Zeus fasteners on it that allows me to remove it very easily if I mm -hmm. wanted to. But the old IROC had a little aperture here. This allowed for a cooler for the heat exchanger of the air-cooled engine. This feeds a different type of heat exchanger, but it doesn't hold oil. Let's, I'm giving too much away, huh? Let's, <laughs> okay. let's start from the cockpit. Let's talk okay. about the interior. <laughs> For those of you who are really Porsche files, you get to remember the RS America vehicles where it was really Porsche's take on a no-nonsense, bare-bones car that you can have fun on the weekends and also go to the track. Now, what's interesting is you pay a premium to remove AC and radios yeah. and make it very, very, very lightweight. There's an RS carpet kit that our friends from SOS Customs in Oceanside did a great job in laying into this beautiful interior of the 1975. And what you may see is that it's very thin, very lightweight, doesn't add much weight at whatsoever. But of course, look at some of the other amenities. I have a very nice Momo prototypo steering wheel. It's this shifter right here. For those of you who are Porsche guys, know that that's not a typical air-cooled shifter. Of course, we have these beautiful Momo seats, which are super cups on both the driver and passenger side. It keeps you in place with some beautiful Momo harnesses, and these are all FIA approved, so you can make sure that you have great safety. Now, as we look at the gauge clutch, I try to keep everything as factory as possible, but this is something that's a little bit similar to touch. That's 11,000 RPM tachometer. And this little pilot little switch here allows me to engage anti-lag whenever I want to have fun and shoot flames, <laughs> which you may see yeah. on, my, on some of my Instagram and YouTube feeds. <laughs> But above and beyond that, here's what something I'm very proud of. This is an AEM serial gauge, which is embedded in a factory cluster, and wow. it allows me to look at different parameters from wideband on one bank to wideband on the second bank. I can also look at simple things like the uh, vacuum or boost, uh, TPS, oil pressure, air temperature, and of course, water temperature as well. So that's pretty cool, keeping me awesome. always 
informed about how my engine is doing. I but didn't even notice factory. that when yeah, I first looked at it because it's it looks very so factory, OEM, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Now, as you look at the rear, which may be a little harder for you to see, I have an AEM EMS, which controls all my fuel and ignition parameters. And that harness was done very nicely with very easy disconnects by rye wire. Despite all the madness with the interior and making it look very pretty, of course, safety is very paramount. As you can see, it has these pretty cool NASCAR style bars. And there's a proper six point cage to not only help with integrity of the car, but also does a great job in making sure that it looks really cool when you're driving up and yeah. down the boulevard. So it's very, very simple, very lightweight, and lots of, this car is lots of fun. Speaking of the weight, yeah. how much does it weigh? With me in it, and I'm a 200 pound guy, look at me, 2450. <laughs> That's power. with you in it? That's with me in it. This is a frightening drive indeed. Well, we gotta get into it. By now. all means. <laughs> Now, as you open this deck lid, you may expect to see a nice air-cooled fan here. As you can see, the aperture is devoid of such <laughs> yeah. old-school technology. What we have in place of this is a water-cooled Porsche mail. Yes, a flat-six 3.4 liter of the Porsche Carrera. It's known as the M96 variety engine. But as a typical building engineer and someone who likes to address challenges, I took care of all the shortcomings of this engine. Wait, so, you a challenge? <laughs> a challenge was for him? No way. Yes. Take a look here. What really is on top of the entire engine is the very nice air to air intercooler courtesy of Turbinetics. They did a smashing job of manufacturing this in house. We use a very nice coating on it that doesn't impede heat exchange, which is very important to keep the air intake temperatures cool as the turbos tend to heat them up as they're compressed. You see this intake right there? That's mm -hmm. from an X51 version of the M96 engine. I have some Vanjin HD clamps courtesy of Vibrant, which allows me to keep boost where it belongs inside the engine and allows for some deflection. And this deflection allows things to move around very easily. Yeah. So I can have some deflection without any problems of losing boost. I don't have to worry about blowing up hoses or anything like that. I run 1000 cc injectors on this. I don't think you can quite see that, but I also run a water methanol system with dual nozzles on this. So when I get into boost, I have a nice mist of 50-50 mixture of water, deionized water and methanol going to the engine to keep things nice and safe. You see these lines right here, these braided hose lines mm -hmm. from g &J? That is part of my cooling system that goes all the way to the front that allows me to run a nice heat exchanger that I alluded to earlier. Yeah. Inside the block, it's fully sleeved. One of the challenges with this engine are people are so concerned about intermediate shaft bearing failures. I have an upgraded intermediate shaft in this. We run Tron pistons with custom BC motor rods as well. And of course, the entire engine is lubricated by Purell 10W40 oil. These are dual 57, 58 billet turbos from Turbonetics, filtered with AEM cone filters, covered with a dry flow pre-filter. And this is important because as you see, this is exposed. Yes. And as you can imagine, when I'm driving, I can get a lot of rubbish or a vortex forming here. This does a great job in really pre-filtering and allowing me to not get as much debris or any debris into the filter so it can do its job without impeding flow. All my hardware is courtesy of our friends from Vibrant. I love using their stainless steel hardware, I should say, and, and piping. This is a V-band style turbine housing, which is coated as well. And as you see, it's a little beat up because I drive the car. How much power does it actually <laughs> make? So, I actually sits today 850 horsepower, which is amazing. 850 combined with 2,400 pounds of weight is a frightening adventure. It's too much. But it, no, sir. <laughs> When I first built this car, I had twin 64 millimeter turbos on this, <laughs> and the thing almost killed me. It made over 1,000 horsepower, shut down my dyno, which shuts down about 1,100. I went for a spin behind this shop on a Saturday. When the first, second, third gear floored it, nothing happened, and then boost came on. Car lifted up, and I hit it right for a tree. Got out of it, which you're not supposed to do in a Porsche, but I was so afraid I got out of it. Car slammed, settled down. I drove it to the back of the shop. When it cooled down, I took those turbos off. <laughs> went smaller. All right, let's uh, move on to the front. Okay, so. In what we refer to as a frunk, I'm a, such an engineer, so forgive me for not having pretty velour under here and so on and so <laughs> forth, but this is my radiator. This is a shroud that does a great job in distributing air throughout the radiator as you drive. And you remember the aperture I talked about earlier? Right. This feeds, it has a nice opening here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it feeds air and distributes it evenly across the right, radiator right. and is evacuated underneath. Then we have a custom tank and this holds about 22 gallons, which is pretty nice. And what I have fuel? a vent tank, just 91. 91. So if you remember, I have 91 
with water methanol. So that's an AM water methanol kit. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about this is when I get to about three PSI of boost, the AM system pumps through two nozzles, a nice atomized mist of water methanol and allows me to keep detonation at bay, allows me to make more power, more boost, and even have more timing. So it's awesome. And if it fails, if something goes wrong with the system or my tank gets empty, there's a sensor right there that sends a signal to my AM EMS and I programmed it in such a way that there's a fail safe. It gives me a boost cut, a yeah. rev cut, whenever that's empty. It takes me about a couple hundred miles to empty that. Really? Yeah, even me driving crazy. You're so answering nice. every question that Thank I have you. in my head. <laughs> Thank you. So and this quite pigtail good... thing, it's my little crude way of, let's say my car topples over, the minuses of the fuel could be lower than this tube that goes all the way outwards. My fuel will not spew out of it. So it'll keep me safe and not have fuel all over the place, which is pretty nice. So this is a little old school take from a fighter jet. And that's where I put my fuel in, which is pretty oh, cool. Wow. She's a lot of fun. I'm a huge advocate of old school Porsches, old school cars, but I love new technology. So this is a perfect way to merge new technology with an old school look. Well, I know there's stuff to talk about with suspension and brakes and yes. everything else, because that's peeking through, but we're gonna have to get that on the list. Sounds Sounds good. So we can throw it in the lift and see what happens. Let's throw it on. So now we get to see all the dirty underside of it. Yeah. And you that know what? a result of you driving it around. Typically I'd apologize, but I'm not going to this time. I drive the crap out of this. So this is years of just rubbish. And then you can even see my own, I'm not going to wire you. This is my own wiring. That's me wiring. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what, this is a hall sensor that I use to pick up speed off of the nubs on the axle. And those engines in that Carrera would have speed sensors on ABS, on the wheel sensors. Since it's an older chassis, it didn't have that advantage. So I had to do something very creative to get that going. And as you can see that we had some very nice, uh, so we have this from Vibrant. This is some Schedule 10 piping with a proper merge collector for a Turbinetics wastegate on each side. I have individual O2 sensors going to each bank as well to give me very good closed loop feedback. So my tuning is absolutely impeccable. Inside this pseudo wet sump system is a very nice setup that allows you to keep oil in the sump area. So when you're doing any extreme driving or cornering, you don't starve the engine for oil. Mm. I talked a little bit about the end tanks that we see in C, the drip tanks. Sure. You can see the venting right there, mm -hmm. but it goes into the drip tank and then it's fed to this Y and then this scavenge pump, turbo scavenge pump allows me to pull away from those gravity fed tanks and go right back up into the cylinder head right there. Mm -hmm. These are Beast Motor Iba coilovers, very dirty because it's years and years of driving. The body itself, is attached to the frame, to the chassis, and the heavier part stays there, so the lightweight bits are now on the banana arm, so you don't have a lot of weight being transferred to the wheel assembly. This is the big gearbox from a 997 that we yeah. have, which is pretty massive. And as you can see, it has some cable actuation going inside the chassis as well. As we go along the lines of all the dirt and years of grime, you can see some really interesting things going on here. This is a master cylinder that's used to actuate the brakes. We have pretty large brake assemblies from Centric. That's a sister company of StopTech. As you look at the suspension. So you said this was well, Mercedes part. That's a Mercedes part. This is actually from 190. It's a larger one. The factory portion one from this old 75 was too small, so that master wouldn't allow me to actuate these larger brakes. Mm -hmm. It actually went to the floor. So we had to get with a larger master to allow me to actuate those. And yeah, it's not boosted. For those of you who keep asking me about boosted brakes, it's mechanics. Stomp on it. Or lean on it. I think that's bit. the only thing that would scare me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Any debris on the track, no brakes. Well, you know what? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so, this is my steering arm assembly. And if I left this steering arm in the factory location, I'd get what is known as bump steer. Well, whenever you hit a bump, the car wants to steer one, one way or the other. By using these spacers on this arm, it allows me to have an even assembly when it comes to the steering arm. And therefore, when I hit a bump, it kind of just stays as is. It doesn't steer the car. Yeah. All right. Moving forward inside here, I don't know if you can see this, I have a sump for the tank and I have this shield, this heat shield yeah. that protects the AM pump right there, which mm -hmm. you can see right there. Now what's interesting cool. is I have this shield because my fan is right here and remember that cooling system we had yeah, earlier? ducting it down. Yes, it ducts all the heat down and I kind of want to reject it away from it. So air is a great insulator. So putting this shield and having air between the pump and that heat does a great job at keeping heat away from the pump's externals, which is pretty nice. And when it comes to sway bars, I have something pretty decent in the front, but the rear has one. I was gonna say, which is pretty this. robust. This is yeah. really nice. And that's a, a very nice racing piece. Tarrant Engineering made this for us, which is pretty nice. It has a nice old school Porsche vibe to it, but it's also fully adjustable. Inside this assembly, you can't see it at all, but there's an aluminum flywheel that is very lightweight. It allows me for mm -hmm. a quicker spool. 
and also much better acceleration. It can also fall out of boost quickly, so you have to drive pretty nicely. Now, with the axles, are these factory? Yes, these are factory axles, and these came from the Carrera as well. And, and they can um, support this much power, no yeah, problem. You know what's weird? Porsche CVs are very, very robust. So you hear things like 911 or 935 CVs. Drag racers tend to use these as upgrades when they're out there racing. Even road race, off-road guys tend to turn to 935, 911 Well, CVs now I'm going to have to consider CVs. that. This is really <laughs> robust. Everything that you see in the modern cars on this, knock sensing with closed loop function for that 3 mm -hmm. AM, so that if I'm ever driving a hot day or driving an opportunity where I have very bad fuel and my engine starts pinging, the EC will see that and add fuel and retard timing automatically based upon a protocol I put in the system. I'm all about safety and reliability, and that's why this engine that most people don't think is exciting, with the right tuning and the right components, you can make it quite robust. Yeah. And have a lot of fun for enjoying sure. the car as well. This is a beautiful car. Thank you. She's a lot of fun. And I love that exciting. you just, you get to rip on it. BC, okay. again, very hey, good work. Thank you. It's a thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I appreciate it's always it. always a pleasure. Thank you. Always, I'm sure more you're going to be back. I have many more to bring. He's got so much. So much more. All right. Next week on BC Mo. <laughs> on BC Biology. <laughs>